It's sad that we have such a study to study tonight. That even with all the flaws of man, betrayal happened to our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ without sin, innocent, never done any harm, never injured anybody, and he was betrayed. And it was all prophecy. The Bible prophesied about the very betrayal of Jesus Christ. But first let's take our Bibles to 1 Samuel 23. Now David is a type of Jesus Christ. And we're going to see that type in Jesus through David in our first study tonight. And in 1 Samuel 23 we have David, verse 9. Wait a minute, not verse 9, excuse me. I'm in the wrong place. Verse 4. Then David, 1 Samuel 23, 4, Then David inquired the Lord it again. And the Lord answered and said, Arise, go to Caleb. For I will deliver the Philistines into thy hand. So David seeks the Lord, and the Lord says to David, Go to Caleb. I'm going to give you victory in Caleb. You're going to win. And David and his men went to Caleb and fought with the Philistines and bought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter as God said it would. So David saved the inhabitants of Caleb. Caleb was spared because of David. Caleb won against the enemy because of David. David protected the inhabitants of Caleb. Protection was by David unto Caleb. They put their trust in David. And David was trustworthy through the Lord that he won the battle for them and protected them. And it came to pass when Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David to Keilah. And he came down with the ephah in his hand. That's part of the, the high priest's robe. And it was told Saul that David was come to Keilah. And Saul said, God has delivered him to my hand. For he has shut him in by entering into a town that has gates and bars. So evidently Keilah is a walled city. It's protected by walls. David's in there. And they shut all the gates. David can't come out. So this is a city that is protected by walls. It is protected by God. Using David. Verse 9. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him, David. And sent him to Biopar the priest, bring hither the ephah. Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, Jehovah, thy servant. Jesus Christ was a servant. Mark. The Gospel of Mark shows us Jesus as the servant of God. David will be king. Jesus will be king. Has so you heard that Saul could seek his tequila to destroy the city for my sake? Well, Jesus has an enemy called Satan, called the Antichrist, and they're out to destroy the city, Jerusalem. David asks, will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? The people that David saved, Lord, the people that we won the battle, the people that we protected, the, the citizens of Keilah should be happy and thankful and great for the victory that you gave me over the Philistines Saul's coming are they going to stab me in the back God are they going to say 
Here he is. Take him. And the Lord said, they will deliver thee up. Well, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Because you know what? That's a sorry state. And I've had that happen to me by Christians. You know, they befriend me. They jump on the bandwagon. Oh, we'll be with you. We'll, we'll you know, we'll... We'll all pray together. We'll get together. Bible study and everything. We'll die. And they're gone. And usually at the first sign of trouble, when Saul shows up, they're gone. Oh, look at that. Sally opened up his big mouth, got the pastor of that church upset. Sally has got those Christians upset by what he said. Sally has got people angry. We don't want to be around him. I've had people come to the uh, the street preaching what we used to do, and they come and they find out we don't want no part of that. They get upset, they yelled. One guy told me a woman stood in my face and screamed at me. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to do it no more. And then they say, you know, we will be with you, we will help you, and they're gone. They betray you. And you turn around and you. You, 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 need, you need that friendship, you, you need that, that, that companionship, you need that fellowship, and they're gone. Few that go through the gate of salvation, very few can walk side by side. Now we have in Matthew 26, then one of the twelve, verse 14, so there's twelve disciples with Jesus his entire life. Judas Iscariot. Judas was one of the twelve. Judas had the signs. Judas preached. Judas went to the city. He was a disciple sent out by Jesus Christ. Type of saw goes to the chief priest. You know what the chief priests are type of? The people of Caleb. If there's anybody who should have welcomed and, and, and thanked and raised up David, it should have been the people of Kalil. If there's anybody who should have lifted up right now is the Lord Jesus Christ by the chief priest. If the chief priest knew the law, obeyed God, and did not have envy, and searched the scriptures, and studied them by the life testimony of Jesus Christ, But instead, we will turn David over to the enemy, Saul. We will turn Jesus over to the enemy, the priest. The priests, the chief priests, have become, the Pharisees and the Sadducees have become with the scribes enemies of Jesus Christ. King Saul has become an enemy of David. And a third party steps in and there's a betrayal. The people that should be happy with David be, will betray David if he doesn't act. Now with Jesus, the man that will betray Jesus and that betrayal will go all the way to the cross. And God told Jesus. Jesus knew everything was going to happen. Jesus knew the very second he'd take his last breath. David had opportunity and left Kael. Jesus, who is God of all, is there anything impossible for God? No. He's going to be betrayed. Went to the chief priest and said unto him, What will you give me that I will deliver him unto you? And they convented with him for thirty pieces of silver. 
And from that time, he saw opportunity to betray him. David won the battle. Are they going to turn me over to Saul? Yes, they are, David. How much money will you give me for him? Okay. Let me find the most convenient moment that we can get him. You know, there are Christians that will betray you. And it's not always 30 pieces of silver. It's, I don't want to be friends with him. I don't want to stick my head out like he does. I want to be liked among the church. I want people to like me. I don't want people screaming at me. I don't want people to hate me. I don't want to carry that Bible around. I don't want to read that Bible. I don't want to have the nerve to tell that person, hey, this is what the Bible says, and this is what you're doing. Hey, I don't want that kind of conflict. So they leave. Jesus didn't leave. Now God, well, David had asked God, "Should I leave?" And God told him, "Yeah, they're going to turn. They're going to turn you over. Get out." And Jesus knew fully. He's not getting out of nothing. David went on to victory, ends up to be king of over Judah in Israel. Jesus Christ gained a victory coming out of that tomb three days and three nights alive and will get a kingdom. Judas gets his 30 pieces of silver. Judas throws his 30 pieces of silver on the ground, goes and hangs himself. King Saul goes into battle. And is wounded. And he suicides himself by falling on his sword. He takes his sword and just falls on it so he would be stabbed along with his armor bearer. So the enemy, King Saul, and the enemy, Judas, they both die by suicide. David got the victory, and Jesus got the victory. And the fulfillment of the betrayal of the prophecy and what Judas did gave me the victory through the gospel of Jesus Christ suffered and died. He was betrayed, turned over by Judas, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And according to the scriptures is also the betrayal of Judas. Say what you will about Judas. He obeyed the word of God. And for the 30 pieces of silver that the Bible speaks about in the Old Testament, he betrays Jesus. That's what the scripture said. And that's what he does. Jehovah told David, Go in there, it'll be battle, and you will win against Caleb. You'll protect them. Those teams will lose. That's exactly what happened. And then Judas comes on. Now there's one thing we need to look at also. If we go to Psalms. Psalms 41 verse 9. Now, I'm going to tell you, Christian, if you're going to live right, if you're going to try to do right, and you're going to have a life of true prayer, true Bible reading and Bible study, and you're going to have conviction, and you're going to lovingly judge things, and you're going to try to help others, as you try to reach out to God to help you, you realize you're not perfect. And you want your fellow Christians, your fellow fellow mates, you want them to get the most possible rewards by Jesus. To hear, well done. 
And you may have to correct your past. And he won't listen. And I'll throw, you know, touching on my anointing. And that's the priest. We didn't anoint you. Anybody can get in a pulpit today. And you may get the knife wounds in your back. You may get the million dollar wound in your butt. And you didn't turn around in battle. You went forward and the guy behind you shot, shot you. And you'll be confused. You'll get depressed. You'll get upset. There'll be sadness. Now think about David. Are they going to turn me over? Yes, they are. Here comes Saul. And Jesus knew exactly what Judas was doing when he was gone. He knew they were having a little conference meeting. They were making a deal. And Judas has sold in his heart 30 pieces of silver when the time is convenient and right. He stuck a knife into Jesus' back. Yes, even our Savior, Jesus. Now, Psalm 41, verse 9. Yea, my own familiar, see the word family in that? Familiar friend. So this is not just friends, this is a familiar friend. Now remember friend. Familiar friend, remember friend. Whom I trusted. When you betray something, you end your trust. You break the trust. Which did eat of my bread. They had dinner together. They had supper together. Judas was at the Last Supper. I don't care what the Catholics say. Has lifted up his heel against me. Now notice that heel. Run that back to Genesis 3.15. Or 16. Yeah, 15 or 16. That's God speaking to the serpent about the woman's seed, Jesus, and his seed, the Antichrist. But you say, well, what about that? Go to Matthew. Matthew 26. 48. Matthew 26, 48. Now he that betrayed him Judas, here that betray, gave them a sign saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he, hold him fast. It's the middle of the night. There's no street lights. There's no porch lights. So Judas says, I'm going to go up to the one that's Jesus. And the one that's Jesus, I'm going to give him a kiss. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, hypocrite, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, said unto Judas. Now you run that back to Matthew 41, I mean, Psalms 41. Friend, wherefore art thou come? And they came, laid hands on Jesus, and took him. Now, there could have been other betrayal stories in the Bible. This is two that stand out. David and Jesus Christ. And I said, if you're going to try to be a faithful Christian, you're going to try to obey God, and you're going to follow right, you're going to be stabbed in the back. Especially like if you live in communist areas of the world. Some people will act like a Christian to turn you in. 
in the underground church. I assume many that were in the Fox's Book of Mars were betrayed to their death. The Book of Pilgrim's Progress. There, there are characters in that book, they want to betray Christians. They want to lead them astray. Demas in Pilgrim's Progress wants to try to lead people off to the silver mine. Remember, Judas was called a familiar friend. Jesus said friend to his enemy. And you might find, you might find, you might find that your Christian friend might be one day, might be one day, maybe, stabbing you in the back. And don't act all surprised because betrayal is a Bible doctrine.